Good. Um, yeah, thanks for, for being here. Uh, thanks for having the chance to present uh, what we're doing at CloudFluid and in collaboration with Entop. What we try to do is to give Flow insights very early in the design process and to have that seamlessly integrated into Entop. Why Flow simulations? We've seen several examples of fluid simulations that improve heat exchanger design by maximizing efficiency, and that is by basically three points. By simulating fluid flows, you can enhance understanding of fluid dynamics. You can visualize the flow, look at uh, velocity distributions, understand turbulence, stagnations, recirculation areas, and with this understanding, create better geometries. Um, you can optimize heat transfer efficiency through better flow, um, best, better utilization of the surface that TPMS structures give you. And lastly, but or, yeah, not, not at least, you can reduce pressure drop quite a bit. And uh, this has been shown, for example, by a study uh, from TU Hamburg um, last year, um, where they had about the same heat transfer rate uh, for a TPMS-based uh, heat exchanger with almost 60% less pressure loss, 100% more compactness, and about half the weight for the same heat transfer rate. So this is quite a big potential that we see here. So why is not everyone using it? Yeah, there's, there's a bit bo bottleneck when it comes to CFD simulations, especially with complex geometries that we often see in additive manufacturing. CFD is not necessarily cheap. Um, traditional CFD simulations, when high fidelity, uh, particularly when dealing with complex structures, it's error prone, it's time consuming, you need a specialist that needs to be trained on, on specific software packages, and you need hardware um, that executes these simulations. Second part, you need hardware. Um, usually when a CFD package is employed, you um, um, use hundreds or more CPU cores. Not everyone has these at hand, and even if you have them, they might be queued up. So you're waiting a long time for your simulations to come in, and that blocks the, say, interactive design process quite a bit. And thirdly, meshing. And I think this is, this is quite a big deal. Um, it can be prohibitively complex to mesh a TPMS structure to export it as STL or some other BRAP format, and um, this limits simulation processes or CAE processes in general uh, to a factor that it is kind of not used as much as we want it to be used today. So how does CloudFluid approach this? And I think we can uh, put this to three columns that we follow to, to make this uh, a closed loop workflow. First, we use the lattice Boltzmann method instead of finite element methods or finite volume methods to solve the flow dynamics. This is, has been shown and our, our uh, implementation has been shown to be about 250 times faster than finite volume methods for transient CFD simulations. One part of that speedup is the lattice Boltzmann method. Another part of that speedup is we rely on high performance graphic cards and optimize the code and the implementation specifically for that. Second part is you don't need to own that hardware. You don't have to uh, own infrastructure. We rely on cloud simulations, and you can basically push hundreds of simulations in parallel to our structures. We utilize capacity from hyperscalers, and um, you have access to uh, HPC GPUs on demand as you need them. And lastly, through um, the collaboration with NTOP, we rely on the NTOP core library where we can read in implicit geometry directly without converting it to any other format and create a voxel mesh directly from that without loss of precision or 
manual effort whatsoever. So this works in, in seconds. A few words about the lattice Boltzmann method, in our case implemented on high performance GPUs from NVIDIA. Uh, the lattice Boltzmann method is a bit different than your usual finite volume method in that sense that it doesn't solve the Navier-Stokes equation directly, but rather solves um, a discretized Boltzmann equation. And therefore, it often says to be a mesoscale method. It's neither simulating molecules in the gas or liquid, nor does it simulate velocities and pressures. It solves discretization, uh, um, discrete functions of the Boltzmann distribution. This algorithm is much, much simpler uh, than finite volume methods, uh, and it is naively parallelizable. So it is a perfect fit for GPU implementation. If you do certain things in the memory structures correctly, you have a guaranteed um, memory bandwidth limited uh, algorithm and that solves uh, a lot of headache when implementing these. And thirdly, lattice Boltzmann methods are um, solving on voxel meshes and voxel meshes is something that is there for ages in computer graphics for example or computer games. We have very robust algorithms for that and can create even the co most complex simulations with that very easily. Our cloud infrastructure um, is using isolated instances, so every simulation job is getting its own GPU, its own memory, its own host device. Um, directly after the simulation finished, the results are transferred and the instance is deleted, so you don't share hardware with any other user or customer. Uh, we use state-of-the-art cryptographic security concepts both during transmission and storage. And we have two regional deployments, one for customers in the US, one for customers in the EU. More will potentially come, um, and data isn't shared between these two instances, so we rely with um, or comply with export regulations. Um, meshing from NTOP implicit files, um, as already said, the NTOP core library gives us access to NTOP designs in implicit file formats directly. We developed meshing algorithms on top of that, so voxel meshing algorithms. And this um, allows us to generate our meshing procedures very, very quickly. For this heat exchanger, for example, 5 million voxel cell mesh takes about 17 seconds. 500 million voxel cell mesh takes less than three minutes. So in a CFD workflow environment, you don't even notice these timings. Uh, they just vanish in the whole workflow. And as a user, you don't see that at all. Uh, you just get presented the results back. We did one step further and used um, NTOBS custom blocks to make it a seamless workflow in the NTOP GUI so that you can design, send simulation jobs, and visualize the results all in the same UI um, without leaving NTOP whatsoever. Um, this works through custom blocks. So we have one custom block to send a simulation job or set up and send a simulation job to the cloud and another custom block to wait for the results to finish or the job to finish, download the results and visualize either velocity field or pressure field. This allows you to use all your automated workflows that you have already in NTOP and just plug in CFD simulation today, um, saving time and enhancing productivity it's also compatible with NTOP Automate. So if you're a user of that, uh, just deploy your, your custom blocks in that routine and you're good to go. And here, um, it's one app, easy to set up, and we don't want you to need uh, 
teaching in LBM or CFD theory uh, whatsoever. So we put every expertise we have in Lettuce Boltzmann and CFD simulations in order to make it a robust and accurate tool. So you don't need to, to learn any of that if you don't want to. So how does that look in, um, in NTOP itself? Here is a surface filter. We create a body for the fluid, a body for the inlet and outlet, all in implicits. And then we have these cloud fluid submit job custom block and cloud fluid retrieve job custom block that will uh, set up the simulation, set the boundary conditions, set the media with density and viscosity, and then send off the job to the cloud, receive the result back, and you will be able to visualize it in one swoop. Um, yeah, when I'm um, basically predicting runtimes, uh, to give you a short idea on those, um, we want one tool to work from ideation through prototyping, through validation, so you don't have to change your tool chain. You can work with coarse mesh meshes in like two million cells resolution, and that will run in one minute about in our cloud environment. And that's including meshing, uploading, downloading, and actual CFD runtime. So you, you will be able to run huge DOEs with that and, and um, receive a lot of information. However, the results won't obviously be super accurate. To get more uh, quantitative results, just tune up the resolution. That's the only parameter yet that you need to define as a, as a user on the numerical side. You will end up with about five minute run times, but you will get much more accurate resolution. And if you find your prototype and you want to validate before printing, you can up, tune up to about 140 million voxels. That's a high fidelity, large eddy simulation then. And you get precise quantitative results. We've done comparison and validations against measurements showing less than 5% in the pressure drop for most of these cases. And still, this is about 30 minutes of a runtime. What do our users say, and we're uh, happy to, to share some of these uh, voices here. Let's start with Marcus Lemke from Siemens Energy, who did a comparison about uh, NTOP to Star CCM workflow against NTOP to Cloud Fluid workflow. And in these circles, you see the runtime in minutes for the two workflows. So NTOP to star CCM, it was like five minutes of surface meshing, 15 minutes of finite volume meshing, and then 40 minutes of sieve diesel on 12 cores. Whereas with cloud fluid, the voxelization was less than a minute, and the sieve diesel on one GPU in our cloud was about 15 minutes for his case. So he states a significant reduction of about 75% of iteration time for this for this uh, benchmark with uh, comparative results. Um, another of our users is AKG, uh, who did a comparison or validation swoop on uh, the pressure drop of this heat exchanger on the air side uh, of this, also designed in NTOP. They have measured data for this, and as you can see, the blue curve and the orange curve uh, overline or overlap quite a bit. So excellent agreement here, both in the shape of the curve and also in the absolute values. And yeah, consider this is a five times increase of the mass flow rate, so um, quite a significant sweep here. Lastly, we had a larger um, test by Fabricate Labs uh, from uh, the US. Um, they're specialized in, in small scale um, printing um, and they did um, some basic research on, on TPMS structures with our code here, finding, for example, dead zones in gyroid structures um, through that workflow and also simulated huge uh, TPMS structures here uh, down to a feature size of 
67 microns uh, for a 50 persons density gyroid. And lastly, they're employing our tool uh, with NTOP and NTOP Automate to automatically create uh, geometries, feed that geometries to Cloudfluid through a uh, command line interface and have that feedback feed it back into NTOP to, to guide the next generation of designs. Simulations, even in the most complex uh, parts, took less than an hour for them. And um, yeah, uh, they're very happy with uh, this workflow so far. Uh, this was it for me. Um, are you ready to close the loop and design process with flow simulations? I would be here for another hour probably. Thanks for your attention and happy to chat.